Okay, so my name is Mike Rasika, and this is um, May 5th, 2020. I got the date wrong on this slide here. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll, what we're doing with these videos is we figured out that we have a recession-proof business. Um, never really thought about it before. I was talking with a, a friend of mine who's a bankruptcy attorney down in Florida, and I asked him, is things slowing down for you? He goes, I'm a bankruptcy attorney. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I guess that is a recession-proof business. He goes, absolutely. I'm doing more business now from home and on the phone with the court systems now than I've ever done. And uh, I hung up the phone. I'm like, you know, I think we are in a recession-proof business too. Uh, so what we do is we invest in non-performing mortgages. Uh, we're able to buy these mortgages at a discount, at a steep discount. And we now own that debt on that house. Uh, we do residential mortgage purchases. If we own that debt. We may buy debt at 5, 10, 15, 20, 40 cents on a dollar. So if they owe us uh, $100,000, we may have paid only $20,000 for that debt. We use uh, primarily our own money to buy these notes, but you can raise capital and uh, take on partnerships to buy these things. A lot of people do that. A lot of my students do that. And um, quite successful at building up partnerships uh, and buying these types of loans. So what we're doing on these calls is, is letting everybody know that, hey, this is really business as usual for us. We are working on our business from any location in the world. As long as we have internet and a phone connection, we're good to go. Uh, the only problem is, is time zone stuff. We may have to get up at three o'clock in the morning to talk to an attorney or something. But uh, other than that, uh, time zones are, if that's your biggest problem running a business, then that's a pretty good problem to have. We've been doing this business now for since 2007, so 13 years, um, 13 years as of last month, actually. Well, it started in uh, March 2007. We buy non-performing residential junior liens primarily, meaning it's a second mortgage. We like those because we keep the borrower in the house. We know that they're paying their first mortgage. They've stopped paying their second mortgage, and maybe they don't know that we can actually foreclose from them not. Um, hold on one second here. So we um, purchase these non-performing junior liens. We know that we've got a borrower that lives in the house. We know that they want to live in the house. And that's a good thing for us because all they need to do is start making monthly payments to us. So uh, we just did a workout not too long ago. Um, it's a 30-year payout. So... I'm 61 years old. I'll be 91 when that borrower makes their last payment. And um, so that's a, that's a very interesting business that we found out about back in 2007, and we haven't stopped since. So now coming into this period of this uh, post-Cove environment that we are moving into, we believe that our business is going to uh, continue to be good, if not explode. Uh, there's always more than enough product for us, even when times are good. People, for other reasons, divorce, illness, um, they end up stop paying their loans, and the banks don't want to, to do the work, and so that's why they sell them to us. That's why they sell them to us so cheap. And so it's been a fantastic business for us, and um, we are going to move into this period with, uh, with or without um, people that want to jump on board with us. We're, we're allowing a few people to come on as students into our um, fast track business course. And um, we're looking for a few more people to get in there. We need, we need people to go out and find these assets. Um, now in last week's meeting, we, we did discuss about sourcing products and sourcing products is a fantastic way to make uh, income. If you find some assets that you don't want to purchase for yourself or you maybe you can't afford to purchase them for yourself, you can sell them out to the network and make a profit and then take that money that you made from brokering and purchase your own notes. Uh, that's how I did it. Fantastic way to, to make money. When I got into this business, I had very little capital. I had a 401k from my job that I used to work at. I rolled my 401k over into a self-directed IRA and used those funds to build up a nice portfolio of notes inside of my self-directed IRA. We're probably going to cover that on next week's uh, call using a self-directed IRA, fantastic way to make money. Tax deferred, ta uh, tax free, which is awesome. 
So if we get a borrower to pay off that $100,000 mortgage, that money goes back into the self-directed IRA, and then I can go in and buy five more uh, notes with that. So yeah, it's been a fantastic business, and we expect to, to be uh, cranking out in 2020 while everyone is still trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this whole virus thing. We're keeping our head down, staying busy, looking for product. We expect to see product uh, in, a, in the near future from private investors like myself, people that have notes that they're like, you know what, let's sell these ones off. They haven't been performing for a while. Let's use that capital to go out and buy some new notes. Uh, some people may be in the a, in a note space with non-performing notes and they're stuck in their servicer. They're paying servicing fees on notes that are not perf uh, creating, generating income. So they may be selling those notes off. Uh, we're, we're seeing quite a few of those already come through. Uh, we expect to see a lot more as this period of, of non-payment continues. And so we think it's a fantastic time for us. And we're looking forward to the explosion. And uh, feel free to, to tag along with us. Uh, we've, we've built up a great group uh, in Fast Track Business. Uh, we've got 41. I think we've got three new people signed up in the last week and um, some pretty smart people in there, people that you should be associating with. I know I'm very proud to have them on board, and I look forward to using them, uh, using their, their skills uh, to improve my skills. Uh, we're all working in this together. We are all in this together. And with the Fast Track community, it's a very powerful network, and we'd love to see you to come join us. All right, so let's get into this here. All right, so this is our recession-proof company. Uh, we, we started this company 10 years ago, 12 years ago now, I guess. Um, never really thinking about, I mean, this, this whole thing just came at us so, so quickly, um, just stopping the gears from turning. Uh, we, were, we were just cranking along nice prior to this whole virus thing, and then um, I had started this note conference group and I thought I was going to have a nice relaxing time teaching the business slowly and carefully and cautiously and comfortably. And then this whole train wreck happened. Uh, I figured this is, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to crank up this business and to really get people going quickly on this business. And um, so I stepped up the meetings and I stepped up the content and we're doing these calls live so that as this train wreck happens, we can uh, comfortably move in and, and start taking down some, some very large assets. Uh, I'm re really ready for this one. I kind of caught off guard on the last one. I, I thought, I, I started this business in 2007 and we were buying onesie twosies from PNC and National City and we had, you know, the economy was booming. As uh, soon as January 1st, 2008 hit, we started seeing a lot more product. By 2009, we were flooded with product. And then I really didn't take advantage of the situation the way I could have. Uh, we were seeing thousands of notes and we were only buying 20. <laughs> well, this time we're buying thousands of notes. If we're seeing thousands, we're buying thousands. I'm not sitting on the sidelines this time. And so that's why I'm taking my troops from the business course with me to take down those thousands. And um, so that's, uh, that's our recession-proof business. So let's get into it. Um, so last week, I covered your mindset, who you need to become to get into this business, who I had to become. I can only use my own experience to teach. And so who did I have to become to be the note guy, <laughs> for lack of a better term? That's, that's really what I was calling myself. I was the note guy. Uh, people were calling me, hey, Mike the note guy. And, um, so he does notes, that guy does REOs, and that woman over there, she does um, fix and flips, and Mike does his notes, he Mike's a note guy. So I covered mindset, I covered due diligence. Uh, with the due diligence, I also covered um, the pricing on, on what is potentially of possible to make on a business, uh, what type of returns do you expect, that determines your pricing. Uh, I did talk a little bit about sourcing, I didn't get heavily into it, uh, we'll probably cover that in, in a future webinar. And I talked about networking. So if you didn't catch last week's, I, that, was, that was called um, the same thing, or recession-proof company, uh, part one. 
So go and look for that in YouTube. And while you're in YouTube, click the arrows down below. Or click, um, I believe it says show more. And in there you'll see uh, books that I recommend. Um, my buddy Gordon Moss wrote a book called um, Performance Anxiety. If you're looking to get into this business, I'd advise you to, to click below and, uh, and pull up that link. And um, some other books that I recommend. And then, of course, you can get into our programs with those links as well. So go back to last week's um, recession-proof company video and have at it. Okay, so what I want to cover today is MSIs. We buy non-performing second mortgages for a stream of income. One note equals one string of income. You can build hundreds of streams of incomes one at a time. We buy a second mortgage on a house in Des Moines, Iowa. It doesn't matter where usually it is. If we can get that loan to start performing, for, it'll last us 20 or 30 years. It might only be 300 bucks a month. But that's $300 a month of a source of income that I pretty much forget about. Uh, I have to print statements or my servicer has to print statements every time a check comes in. That, that's not a terrible job. I can outsource that if I want to. Uh, I go to the post office once a week and pick up the mailbox money. And I get that, that one stream going, I leave it alone, put it into the system, I work on another one. And now I can get two streams of income and then four streams of income and then eight streams of income and on and on and on. You can do this over a couple of years or a couple of months. It depends on how much appetite you have, how much ambition you have. But this business is about multiple streams of income. Like I said, we got one performing last month, the beginning of the month, and that's going to go out for 30 years, 300 bucks a month. And I'm like, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, if you, if you think about it, that stream of income, once it's coming in, it goes off to the side. And now I don't have to worry about it. The checks come in, the checks come in, and it pays down that mortgage slowly. And we're giving a homeowner a break. Their, their monthly payment used to be, I think, 575 or 550. Uh, we lowered the monthly payment down to 300 bucks a month, and they're tickled to have that opportunity. And, and it's a mindset for them, too. So you got a picture. Here's this borrower who took a loan out on the house that they live in, right? And they stopped paying at some point. Well, they got to know that it's not, a, it's not a good thing. And most borrowers, when they took the loan out, had good intentions to pay the, the loan back. But then they stopped, and they realized that as the months go by that they're not making those monthly payments, that number is adding up and doubling every month. So if it was 575, now you go in to uh, $1,150 the next month, and then it goes to $1,600 the next month, and it goes to $2,200 the next month, and, and now they, and now two years go by, and we're looking at, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars of of lost payments, payments that were missed. Now they know that they'll never come up with that number. Well, the bank sells that loan to us, and that thirty thousand dollars that they owe us from all those monthly payments, it comes to us. It's it's owed to us, and um, we use that thirty thousand dollars as a negotiation to get the borrower back on track. We may give them a discount of, listen, for every dollar you give us, we'll give you $2 worth of equity back in your, in your house. That's a fantastic thing that we can offer. We're, we're actually giving them the mindset of an investor by doing that. We're, we're saying for every dollar that you invest in your house, we'll give you $2 worth of equity in your house. So a $10,000 investment, we can give you $20,000 of equity back into your house. And so that's what we do. We turn them into investors with an investor mindset of 100% return on the, the dollar that they spend, they get $2 back. So that's a fantastic mindset for the borrower. And now do they not only stop feeling guilty about not making the mortgage payment, but now they're actually saying, you know what, we turn this into a positive, a big positive. And they thank us. It's crazy. But it's not crazy. And so we are able to provide this service because of the discount that we're getting on these, on these loans. So we're getting these multiple streams of income functioning. It's just like 
a picture of this now. Picture and picture a website that generates fifty dollars a month. You are traffic goes to the website. They see a product. Uh, it could be a pair of sunglasses. And for every pair of sunglasses that gets sold on that website, let's say you make two dollars. So you sell a hundred of those things. You get two hundred dollars a month coming in off of that website. That's a stream of income that you don't really have to do too much work. You may have to go in there and do some maintenance. You may have to go and spend a little money driving traffic to the awesome pair of sunglasses that you're trying to sell. Uh, you spend a little time maybe changing up the artwork in the website. But for the most part, that is a stream of income that you don't have to work for. I don't have to go and trade my hours for dollars at a job. I, and this may be a little off topic, but I think that this virus will actually free up some people that were stuck in their jobs and get them to start thinking like entrepreneurs. Uh, the note business is entrepreneurship to the max because we're getting these multiple sources of income performing so that we can live the lifestyle that we want to live, which is travel the world, go where we want, work with our family if we want, pay our kids what we want, and not have to worry about going to work. I, I think this virus is actually going to free up a lot of people to pursue these multiple streams of income. So just keep that in mind as, as you're looking around trying to piece together <clears throat> where your next income is going to come from, try to get a passive income coming in with a recession-proof company like the Note Business. I believe websites could be a recession-proof business as well because people are still shopping. I know I'm, I'm doing more online purchasing than I ever have uh, just to avoid traffic and cars and uh, um, people. <laughs> which I never thought I would ever have to do. So multiple streams of income has been a part of our life for 13 years now and a um, fantastic way to get income coming in every month pretty much at an infinite return because, all right, so we buy this loan for 60,000, we buy this $60,000 debt for $10,000, we get the borrower to give us $10,000 in return to get rid of those arrears, those first payments, and we get those payments, we get that first lump payment coming in of 10,000 bucks. And then for the next 20 years, we're gonna get $300 a month coming in. Well, that's infinite return. And non-performing junior liens allows us to buy these things for the price of a used car. Uh, 10,000 bucks is the price of a used car to get an infinite return, to be able to be on title on someone's house, to do a real estate investment deal for 10 grand is that's why it appealed to me. I was a blue collar guy. I always had a used car. Uh, $10,000, I could get my hands on $10,000 to buy a new car, a new car to me, a used car to someone else. And so that's why this business appealed to me. Uh, we've learned how to mitigate the risk by performing our due diligence. We've been able to source our product so that we're not doing like a wholesale deal where one house, one deal, then when you're done with that deal, you gotta go out and find another house. We've got a source that we've been working with now for four years. We've seen 1,800 notes from them and we've purchased over 100 just from one source. So our source can feed us for years. We can buy in bulk. We can get together as a group and buy in bulk. That's a fantastic way to, to, to really up your game and to up your numbers so that, so that we can take this period of time that we're in and start to really think big. Um, thinking big by, by banding together and buying these assets as a group. That's what we're doing in No Conference um, Fast Track Business is we're, gonna, we're buying these things as a group. And so as our students go out to source the product, they can bring it back to the group, make their commission for brokering, take a few notes down for themselves, and sell the rest of the product out to our group. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect situation. Um, it's, I've, I don't know of any other, other uh, practice out there that's doing this. So go after the multiple streams of income, get these things performing, move on to the next loan, get that one performing, move on to the next loan. Before you know it, you've got 20 sources of income feeding you and paying you. And yeah, it keeps you busy. Or you can source this out to other people. Uh, one of the one of 
one of my old friends uh, wrote me uh, an email yesterday and he said, hey Mike, how you been? Um, I'm getting, I got, I don't know, 40 notes that I need to work on. Do you know anybody that we can hire? Do you have anybody that has experience? And I said, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, I sent him the contact over. Uh, it's someone uh, who was one of my ex-students who could use the extra money to work those portfolios until she can, uh, she's got a couple of notes of her own and now she can learn how another company does their business, get more experience there and earn a few bucks while she's doing it. Uh, she's a, a stay at home mom and she's got time to work this business from home, which is fantastic. She was able to quit her job, coincidentally happened to be a job at a hospital up North Jersey, which is not a great place to be, about five months before this virus hit. She quit her job. She was working for another student of mine who had a portfolio. She worked, she's working those notes, and now here's another person that she can go do some work for so that my investor friend can go out and source more product and spend his time looking for more product. It's brilliant. And you can outsource this stuff to some pretty skilled people that are out there if you don't want to do the work yourself. Um, contemplating that myself. Uh, Pre-COVE, we had eight foreclosures going on. Uh, interestingly, three of them went into Chapter 13 to avoid my foreclosure and to, I guess they thought that I would go away if they went into Chapter 13, but uh, just the opposite. With Chapter 13, they will start making monthly payments to us. They will take the arrears and break that down over five years, divide that by 60 months, which is five years, and add that division to the monthly payment and I think all three of them are going to be around 700 bucks a month. I don't know how they're going to do it, but that's what the payment comes out to. That's what the trustee is going to tell them they have to pay. And that's the way it is. So, so three of those loans potentially have turned into a cash flow by going into Chapter 13. Uh, I've got a couple of people on this call that are partners of mine that we've been getting Chapter 13. My son is actually on here uh, who gets... Uh, 450 a month, I think, from the trustee, or $500 a month on a note that we, we sold them. And uh, that's, that's some easy money. Uh, chapter 13 is awesome. And I am going to cover that in future calls as well, uh, how we handle our Chapter 13s. And um, so let's move on here. So multiple streams of income has been a way of life for us. And so what I want to get into now is when we're outsourcing product, there's the who, what, where, when, and why these people are selling notes, who, what, where, when, and why. Those are the questions that I train my students to ask as they're out there purchasing. So first of all, who? Who am I buying this from? Is this a trusted source? Is this someone that all they do is sell loans? Or is there some type of distress? Not only do we like to buy distressed assets distressed for distressed borrowers, but we like to buy distressed assets from distressed sellers. Uh, this is this is probably more important. The who, what, where, when, and why is is more important about the seller of the product than about the borrower that we're actually buying. So, who's selling these notes? Is it is it someone that I can I can call a micro seek and say, Hey, Mike, have you ever heard of this company? Are they credible? Or do I need to have some type of Bailey letter in place, which would protect me from potential? Uh, potentially getting ripped off from the seller. And they're out there. Unfortunately, they are out there. And let me just let this guy in there. So who you're buying these assets from is critical. Uh, are, so another important thing is, are they just brokers? Meaning, are they a middleman? Uh, which is fine, as long as, as long as they know what they're doing. I've seen so many people that got stuck in between a trade that didn't know how to close the trade. I, when I'm dealing with a broker, I always ask him, how many deals have you closed? Uh, because I'm a note broker myself. And I've been brokering notes since 2009. A lot of my friends that are on this call have bought notes for me. And so I know how to get a deal closed. Can the broker that's in between me and the actual seller close the deal? I found that most cases they can't. Um, I don't know if I've ever closed a deal with a broker. I don't think so. so. I've always been, I'm pretty sure I've always been direct to my source, whoever I'm buying these loans from. Uh, now I may have bought them from a company who their intentions were to sell 
these notes. They may have bought 400 notes and, and planning on thinning out the herd to maybe 200, keep the other 200 assets for themselves at possibly a, a no purchase price being into it. So what do I mean by that? They, they bought 200 notes at um, 2 million bucks and they're going to, they bought 400 notes at, at 2 million bucks. They're going to cut that thing in half and try to get their 2 million back and still keep 150 or 200 of those notes by making a profit on the other notes. Uh, pretty easy to do if you buy right. Very easy to do if you buy them right, uh, meaning the, at the right price. So who am I buying these notes from? Is, is their primary function just to sell notes, uh, or which would be like a brokerage house, uh, like a Mountain View Financial or something um, where that's all they do. People bring them their notes to say, hey, go get the highest and best you can for these things. I, I know someone else who's on this call that is um, pretty frustrated working with a, a brokerage house because they think that he's going to broker these notes, which is pretty hilarious because he's a big buyer. He's one of my students who, who is a big buyer and he's got some capital behind him. And here are the, here's this outfit, whatever you want to call them, that are, that are kind of a wise guy to him be, just because he's new to the business. Um, so we're going to get that, we're going to get that straightened out, but it's pretty comical. Um, who's out there selling notes and uh, who you're buying from always ask the question, why are they selling who well, we'll get to that as, as we go through. Okay. So what, what are they selling? Are they selling first? Are they selling seconds? What does the collateral file look like? Uh, what does the borrower look like that? What is going to be pretty much our due diligence? on the assets that we are trying to purchase. That's, that's kind of a simple one. I did cover that pretty deep last week on due diligence. Um, so let's say where, first of all, where, where, where is the location of the house that we're buying a mortgage on? Where are the collateral files? And so where is a very important question because there are certain states that have regulations that don't allow us to, to actually own notes there unless we have certain licensing. Uh, they don't allow us to actually, um, hold on one second. Okay. So get back to it. Where are the assets located? Where are the collateral files at the moment? And where do we send the wire? <laughs> Very important question. Um, so where, the, is the seller located and where do we send a wire? Um, not too much to, to talk about with where, uh, when, now this is very important. When, if you ask, let's say, let's say you receive a couple of loans to look at, let's just keep it simple. You get in touch with the servicing company and they, they send over two loans for you to look at. So there's certain questions that you need to ask right up front the moment that you receive these things if you think that you're seriously looking to buy these um, you have to ask first of all when when is very important in the relationship between you the buyer and the seller when is this going to happen when do i have to submit my offer when can i get access to privileged information that you're not supplying me with the credit report right now and you want to get all of, those, all of the information that you can as soon as possible so that you can come up and make a decision because there's probably 10 other people looking at the same assets that you're looking at. So usually the first one wins. And, oh, hold on one second. There we go, thanks. So, when do we have to close? When can I get access to more information? If there is more information that you need, you want to ask all of these questions up front so that you're not surprised later on. You're not possibly blackballed later, later on by um, not performing the way you're supposed to just because you didn't know the process. I, especially if you're new to this uh, and if you're dealing with, uh, well, anybody, you, you want to look as professional as possible you want to close as quickly as possible. You want to wire when the wire needs to be done. When am I going to get the collateral files? That's the hugest question that you can ever ask because I've done deals 
with people that I don't do business with anymore that were not forthcoming with the collateral files. So I, early on, I would wire ahead of time, which is now I don't do. I would wire up front, and then the seller would take their sweet time to send the collateral files over if they sent them at all. Um, I've never had any, any lawsuit issues, but I, my friends have uh, because the when never happened. They never, they never sent the collateral files. Um, you really want to make sure that you're dealing with somebody that's reputable because we're talking about a lot of money here. And you want to ask these questions up front so that everybody is on the same page. Okay, why? This is, this, is, this is how I've made my money. Why are they selling their assets? Are they selling because they always sell and that's just their job? Or are they selling because they're raising capital to buy more notes? And so I, I, I want to know as much as possible why they're selling notes. I, I've bought notes off of people that were raising capital to buy more notes. Um, I guess something that was coming down the pike looked more attractive than the notes that they had in their portfolio already. And maybe they, they got better pricing or something. They needed to raise capital quick. Uh, it's been some of my best deals um, when I knew why they were selling. Why, why are they selling because they're getting out of the business? A hedge fund that, and that does happen, where the, the business looks like a, a great model from the outside, but they never really got the, um, well, they never got these five basics down, the who, what, where, when, and why, and they got taken advantage of, maybe. And so they, they just want to get out of the business, cut their losses, and get out of there. Again, some of the best deals that I've ever purchased because I am out there in the note world, um, people bring me a portfolio and say, you know what, why don't you put this out to your group and um, see if you can't get these sold, we'll give you a couple of bucks. I'm looking them over and I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy these myself, is that all right? And they're like, we just want out. We just, we just I, I can't stand listening to the problems of my investors and blah, blah, blah. So fork over the money and I take their, their leftovers. Um, other, other times you've got a, a hedge fund that uh, may be in a five-year cycle with the fund that they that they created and they're ending their five-year cycle uh, maybe four and a half months four and a half years in I try to keep track of those guys that I know so that I'm the first one to say hey I, I think you got a fund that's uh, just about to uh, to disband you got any assets left over yeah we'll send them over um, I want to be the first one in so I try to keep track of my buddies that have those funds and be the first one to see those assets. Uh, it's worked out a couple of times for me. Um, they had it once, the first time, they had it listed up on their website that the fund had done a 221% return and they're closing those loan, they're closing that fund and they have to, the way it works is whatever happens, it happens in a window of four and a half years, but then getting towards the five year mark, we have to liquidate and win, lose or draw, that's how it goes. So I saw that they had a 218 or 221% return or something with this non-performing junior lien fund that they started. And I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get in on this. So I think I was right. I, because I think usually maybe six months or a year prior to the fund liquidating, they're out raising capital to start a new fund. And so they kind of put those, the leftover 19 loans on the back burner because they already gave their investors a fantastic return. Uh, I don't know how they share their their preferred rate or whatever, but they were on to the next fund. And so we cleaned up their portfolio, got them liquid and started calling the borrowers and like, what happened? We were supposed to hear from you. Like for the people that we were talking to, they said they'd get back to us. They never got back to us. They, they had gotten such a fantastic return that they had other borrowers that they just like, let's just move on to the next fund. So that was an easy portfolio to work. Uh, we had people that were primed up and ready to go. And, um, all they had to do was find out where to send the checks. And uh, so that was a fun one. But why is someone selling? I, I want, it's, it's, it's psychology. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like the pawn shop mentality where somebody needs cash and they need it quick. Um, they grab their Martin guitar and they run down to the pawn shop. And that's like their last thing that they have. They, they need cash to fix the transmission or something. And um, 
we want to be there. You want to, you want to be there ready for that, for when that guy walks in the door. And um, I think knowing why they're selling is, is your strategy that you can, I don't want to say take advantage, but use to your advantage and, and actually help someone out too. Like if there's a hedge fund right now who's, who needs some cash for their May 1st uh, disbursement out to their investors, let's be the person that actually gives them some relief and helps them out and, uh, and gives them that cash so that they can uh, keep their investors happy. So a why is a big one. Um, and so the who, what, where, when, and why, I, I keep coming back to that as being probably the most important thing in the purchasing process of the note business. Uh, it, it covers all bases. I think that I think that was from an old detective or a detective show or something. Um, couldn't tell you what it was. Probably probably too old for most of you guys that are on here. But uh, if you ask those questions, you can really come up with some good deals. Um, so I, I think I think like I, I kind of touched on before. I think this virus is going to open up some people's eyes to realize that they were depending too much on their job and not thinking about starting a, a small business or, or even a medium-sized business now. And um, I think the time is now. And um, the, the amount of time that we have to start a business is, you know, we're still in lockdown over here in New Jersey. And so I've been able to, to really tune up some of my, uh, my other skills that, that I've been wanting to learn for years but put on the back burner. LinkedIn is one of them. And I, I want to grow my database on LinkedIn with a lot of uh, bank contacts. And so that is something I'm really focusing in on right now. And obviously LinkedIn, I mean, uh, YouTube. Um, I, I think that YouTube is fantastic. I've always been a photographer and videographer and being able to take those skills now and with all the new software and editing software that's out there, I love editing video. My son loves editing video. Uh, my daughter loves making um, Canva stills. And um, so there's, there's just so many tools out there to make it a fantastic business uh, with very little money and very little time. So uh, I said this last week and I'm saying this again, the only way to predict the future is to create it. And if you tell yourself right now that, hey, I want to have 20 notes by the time um, July 4th comes or, or something, you will actually succeed in the goal once you make a decision to pursue a goal. Uh, it's worked a million times for me. All I need to do is say, hey, I want to be here by this time. And all of a sudden, things start falling into place. Things start, people start coming into my life that allow me and get me to that place and sometimes even further than that place and sometimes even quicker than the date that I set on it. It's an amazing process once you make the decision to create your future. And so it's a, it's a big part of my mindset and um, I like being around people that know how to do this too because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's fun to, to get into that. So this is all on you. Um, your discipline will determine your success. If you're already successful, fantastic, but you can always be more. You can always do more and have more as well. So if you haven't, please go to noconference.com. Uh, you'll see a, a spot where you can put your name and your first name and email address in. I send out um, my newsletter on a kind of a haphazard weekly basis. And um, I tr when I find it, come across some good content that I can share out with my network, I do. Um, once you put your name in there, I, I kind of consider you as in my network because from time to time, I may have questions or other people in the 900 people that I'm hanging with have a question that I don't have the answer to, or I may not have the best answer to, or I may not want to answer. I want to see how my other 900 people react and answer. So I'll put that question out to the 900 people for them to reply back with, with whatever question they have. And uh, it's friggin' awesome I, to have a network like that. To, you know, I, I remember hearing about um, Henry Ford actually had to go before a court because I think he was a monopoly or something. And they said, so how do you get, how do you get your, your questions answered 
He says, well, I have a button for my accountant and I have a button for my attorney and I have a button for my manufacturing president and I have a button for my healthcare, <clears throat> for my workers. And, and so he's got a row of buttons uh, for his intercom system that he can get a hold of any of these advisors at any time to answer some really great questions, really hard questions. And so I don't need to know everything. And, and now this is our intercom, right? I can reach my network from this, for my sources, 900 people that are in my group. And so I'd love to have you guys as part of my group. Uh, I'm really enjoying these webinars. I hope you are too. They will be on YouTube. And like I said, click the show more buttons down below and you'll see the books that I recommend, books that I like to read, um, books that I've read several times uh, just because it's great information. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all being on the call today and we'll see you next week.